Hello, and welcome to this presentation on anti-human secondary antibodies offered by Jackson Immuno Research. My name is Dave Fancy, and I am the Chief Operations Officer at Jackson Immuno Research. It is my pleasure to walk you through this presentation of our secondary antibodies most relevant for COVID-19 and other serological immunoassays. The reliability and accuracy of any serological immunoassay hinges on the quality of the reagents employed. Common to all immunoassays, and perhaps most important, are the detection antibodies. Their specificity, affinity, purity, and conjugate activity can make or break a diagnostic test. In 2020, we saw a large number of tests developed to ascertain exposure to COVID-19 by measuring the antibodies produced as part of one's immune response. The hope was that the immune surveillance would provide epidemiological data that could guide public policy or even give someone a free pass to work and travel. Unfortunately, a large portion of these antibody tests fail due to poor sensitivity or specificity, leading to both false negatives and false positives. This compromised our ability to evaluate the disease prevalence. One lesson, which cannot be overemphasized, is that before embarking on the development of a diagnostic test or a set of clinically relevant research experiments, it pays to take the time to validate the best antibodies and identify suppliers you can trust to provide these reagents with the consistent quality and at the needed quantities. Not only will this save you time and money, but more importantly, it could impact someone's health. In this presentation, we will review some of the many secondary antibodies that Jackson Immuno Research produces for serological assays. Our isotype-specific antibodies are manufactured from a variety of host species under an ISO 9001 2015 registered quality control system. A diverse array of antibodies with minimal cross-reactivities are available in both off-the-shelf research sizes and bulk quantities. Serological immunoassays that measure the host's antibody response are conceptually straightforward. Two typical examples are illustrated on this slide. The first type of assay, shown on the left, is commonly referred to as a sandwich assay. In this case, the blue primary antibody is bound to a solid surface such as an ELISA plate, bead, or lateral flow strip. During an incubation step, it captures an antigen of interest. The antigen is also recognized by the antibodies of the host immune system, produced after an infection, for example, shown in orange. Finally, the host antibodies are detected by the secondary antibody, shown in purple, that may or may not be isotype specific depending on the desired readout. The figure on the right depicts an assay where the antigen is first coated onto the solid surface and then the patient's sample is applied. If the sample contains antibodies to the antigen, they'll bind to it. In a subsequent step, they are detected by an anti-human secondary antibody. In both cases, reporter molecules, which are conjugated to the secondary antibody, can vary. These often include enzymes such as horseradish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase, or small molecules that fluoresce or carry some other chemical property. Before selecting a capture or detection antibody, it's important to consider the assay format since different tests require different antibody specifications and formulations. For example, secondary antibodies used in endpoint assays that involve long incubation times like ELISA and Western blot may require high specificity to achieve strong signal over background. Assays like lateral flow may require fast binding kinetics in addition to high specificity since the detection must occur in a matter of seconds as the antibodies rush past the test and control lines. The quantity of an antibody required also comes into play when considering the assay. Antibodies used in ELISA and Western blot are typically diluted thousands fold, whereas those employed in lateral flow are used at much higher concentrations. If the test will be commercialized, very large volumes may be required, so choice of host species is critical to maintain supply. Antibody purity is often an important consideration as well. Many assays require highly purified antibodies, but some, like turbidimetric tests, can be run effectively with anti-serum only. Finally, different assays may require that a fragmented antibody be used. For example, if detector antibody binding to FC receptors is a problem in flow cytometry, a FAB or an F'2 fragment can be used to avoid this issue. As you'll see later, many of Jackson's antibodies are available as fragments. When choosing a detection antibody for serological assays, one often has the choice of using a monoclonal or polyclonal pool. Monoclonals are derived from a unique clone and thus have a consistent structure and binding activity. Large quantities of monoclonals can be produced from tissue culture, but the cost can often be prohibitive. Manufacturing monoclonals from ascites can be a cost-saving option, though variances can occur between production runs and the product may contain contaminating endogenous mouse proteins. Polyclonals, by their nature, are a mixture of antibodies that can bind a patient antibody at multiple sites simultaneously, as this slide illustrates. 
This has the added benefit of signal enhancement, which may be critical for low abundant immunoreactive antibodies early in the course of an infection. Another advantage to having a pool of secondaries that are multivalent is that they are very effective in turbinometric assays that require precipitation as the readout. High volumes of polyclonals are most often produced in host species such as goats or donkeys, which ensures a reliable and cost-effective antibody supply over the long run. Ultimately, the choice of whether to use a monoclonal or polyclonal antibody will depend on a variety of factors unique to the assay and the market need. Jackson produces anti-human antibodies in mice and rabbits for small to mid-sized needs and in alpacas, donkeys, and goats for large bulk requests. The most popular anti-human antibodies are made in goats, and this host species is ideal for large bulk requests. Large herds can be kept that produce a broad spectrum of antibodies, which helps to ensure supply, consistent overall antibody activity, and specificity. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Jackson has increased production of related antibodies for infection surveillance and related secondaries for COVID antigen detection tests. Our goal is to ensure that the best and most appropriate products are available to those developing diagnostics with cost and test readout in mind. A quick conversation with our technical and production team can go a long way when selecting the most appropriate antibody. It is often the case that the most highly cross-absorbed refined antibody is not necessary to meet the need, and validating this upfront can be key to future supply chain success and profitability. This slide shows three of our four isotype specific goat anti-human antibodies that will only recognize human IgG, IgM, or IgA. Specificity is achieved by limiting recognition to the FC fragment of IgG, the FC5 mu region of IgM, or the alpha chain of IgA. They are designed to be used in assays where no other host species antibodies are present, such as when a direct bind ELISA is being performed and the patient antibodies are detected with an anti-human isotype specific antibody. One example of a test where another host species might interfere with the assay is in a sandwich ELISA. If a primary antibody, such as a mouse monoclonal, is used to capture the antigen, the secondary antibody needed for patient antibody detection could cross-react with the mouse antibody if it were not minimal cross to mouse, resulting in a false positive. At this point, some may be wondering, if the detection antibodies are generated and purified on specific human isotypes, why would they recognize isotypes of other host species? The simple answer is that there is significant conservation of sequence and structure between immunoglobulins of different species, which can lead to cross-reactivity. With this in mind, isolating antibodies requires one to consider making them either isotype, species-specific, or both. It just depends on how complex one's assay is with regards to the number of different antibodies employed. So finally, for these products, if you aren't using other host species antibodies in the assay, these are very cost effective because high yields can be achieved since other host cross reactivities don't need to be removed ahead of time. This slide shows an example of binding data comparing two of our anti-human IgG specific antibodies used in a Sandra's ELISA assay. One antibody was produced in ghosts, which is shown in pink, and the other was produced in rabbits, shown in green. In this experiment, either goat anti-human IgG-specific or rabbit anti-human IgG-specific antibodies were coated onto an ELISA plate. Human IgG was subsequently titrated across the wells, and then captured human antibody was detected using peroxidase-conjugated goat or rabbit anti-human IgG-specific secondaries. In both cases, we can see the binding activities are nearly identical, detecting human IgG down to picomolar concentrations. Both the antibodies were generated from pools of large numbers of animals. One side note is that many believe different species can provide more or less affinity or specificity. It's often said that rabbit antibodies have greater affinity, but some also believe they can be more nonspecific. In this experiment, we see neither differences in detection limits or background issues from those produced in goats versus rabbits. Both work equally well. Each should be considered based on assay format and quantities needed. And for large supply needs, the goat species is the better option. This slide shows an identical experiment to the previous one, except that human IgM is captured from solution in a sandwich assay using goat versus rabbit isotype-specific antibodies. The results are similar in that both secondaries have limits of detection in the picomolar range, though there appears to be a slightly higher signal generated when the peroxidase-conjugated goat anti-human IgM is used. This final experiment with this class of anti-human isotype-specific antibodies shows the capture of human IgA from solution using our goat anti-human IgA and detection using either peroxidase-conjugated goat anti-human IgA 
or peroxidase conjugated rabbit anti-human IgA. Both detections and antibodies perform well, again detecting the human IgA isotype in the picomolar range. In this experiment, the peroxidase conjugated goat anti-human IgA does top out at a higher signal, however, alluding to higher sensitivity. Either way, depending on your assay design and supply needs, both antibodies are effective at detecting and quantifying human IgA. This slide illustrates the use of some of our goat anti-human IgG and IgM antibodies in a control COVID-19 serological response assay using the protocol described by Aminat et al. in Nature Medicine. In this experiment, ELISA plates were coated with SARS-CoV-2-S1 spike protein and then blocked with IgG-free BSA. In the left pane, Human IgG anti-CoV-2 spike protein in green, or human IgM anti-CoV-2 spike protein blue, were titrated across different wells and then detected with peroxidase conjugated goat anti-human IgG. As you can see, the human IgG anti-spike protein is detected very well using our peroxidase conjugated anti-IgG specific secondary. The secondary does not detect wells incubated with human IgM anti-CoV-2 spike protein, however. The right panel is the complementary experiment where a human IgG anti-CoV-2 spike protein green or human IgM anti-CoV-2 spike protein blue were titrated across the wells and then detected with peroxidase conjugated goat anti-human IgM. Similarly, the human IgM anti-spike protein is detected very well using our peroxidase conjugated anti-M specific secondary, which does not detect wells incubated with human IgG anti-CoV-2 spike protein. Taken together, these data demonstrate the ability of Jackson's IgG and IgM isotype-specific antibodies to discern between the isotypes in a currently important and scientifically relevant need. While the gold standard in testing and validating antibody specificity often starts with an ELISA, we now present an experiment where we demonstrate the utility of some of our secondary antibodies in capture format lateral flow immunoassay. In this experiment, a nitrocellulose membrane was striped with test lines consisting of goat anti-human IgG goat anti-human IgM, and donkey anti-chicken IgY as the control. After blocking the membranes with IgG-free BSA and applying a wicking pad, the half strips were dropped into solutions of 40 nanometer gold conjugated secondary antibodies and gold conjugated chicken IgY for the control. Also contained in the test solutions was buffer, or 50 nanograms of either purified human IgG, human IgM, both human G and M, or diluted human serum. The first strip from the left shows the control line when neither IgG or IgM were present. The second strip shows the result when the solution was spiked with chrome pure human IgG alone. As you can see, the human IgG test line and the control line are only visible. The third strip shows the result when the solution was spiked with chrome pure human IgM. Again, only the IgM and the control lines are positive. On the fourth strip, both IgG and IgM were included in the test solution and both have strong positive signals. Finally, when diluted human serum was included, both IgG and IgM test lines are clearly positive as one would expect. This experiment is a simple case study showing that Jackson's isotype specific antibodies can be used in a demanding lateral flow immunoassay, which typically relies on antibodies with high isotope detection specificity that also contain excellent binding kinetics. To this point, we have focused on our isotype-specific antibodies. If, however, one doesn't require antibodies that distinguish between human isotypes, or you would like to detect all the isotypes simultaneously, we offer antibodies that are pan-specific. Shown in this slide is binding data from a capture ELISA with the goal of detecting multiple human isotypes simultaneously. The left panel shows the capture of human IgG, IgA, and IgM isotypes using a GOAT anti-human IgG, A, and M pool for both capture and detection as the peroxidase conjugate in green. It also shows the capture and detection using a GOAT anti-human IgG, IgM rich pool in pink. You can see from this experiment that both antibodies perform well. The right panel shows capture of IgA alone using the two antibodies. The pan-specific antibody that is enriched for additional IgA binding performs slightly better than the one produced to heavily favor IgM and IgG binding. Ultimately, if your goal is to measure all three isotypes strongly, using our GOAT anti-human IgA plus IgG plus IgM antibody is recommended. If, however, you are only concerned about measuring IgG and IgM predominantly, then our IgG plus IgM detection antibody may meet your needs better. 
I previously mentioned the importance of accounting for all the antibodies used in an assay to avoid background issues due to cross-reactive interactions. Cross-reactivity between secondary antibodies to other species is perfectly normal and should be expected given that mammals are so closely related at the genetic level. Fortunately, this complication can be dealt with, though considerable effort is often required to remove cross-reactive antibodies from a pool of secondaries. If you do have cross-reactivity issues that you think are causing background problems, we have a large catalog of antibodies to choose from, which would enable you to fine-tune your experiment or diagnostic assay. On this slide, we show a few examples to consider that are popular for serology tests. The first is human IgG-specific antibody typically used when other mouse-derived primary antibodies are employed elsewhere in the test. It is minimally crossed to bovine and mouse immunoglobulins and other serum proteins, so interference from these species' host proteins should not occur. The second has minimal cross-reactivity to bovine, mouse, and horse proteins. It can be used if donkey serum is used as part of the blocking step. Horse immunoglobulins may be present in the sample, or mouse immunoglobulins are used somewhere in the assay. The third antibody is designed to be used when both mouse and rabbit primary antibodies are also being used in the assay. It is common for assays to include both mouse monoclonal and rabbit polyclonal primary antibodies in multiplex serological assays. For example, mouse anti-CD3 or anti-CD9 antibodies used in flow cytometry, cross-match assays, or when rabbit anti-thymocyte antibodies could be present in the sample. If you're in need of a specific cross-reactivity to be removed, we have a very large selection of antibodies that may work for you. If not, we can create custom minimal cross-reactive profiles upon request. In this presentation, we've spent most of our time exploring the options of secondary antibodies to choose from. There is, however, another piece to the serological assay puzzle that we also address at Jackson. Most of our secondaries come in a wide variety of reporter molecule conjugates ranging from enzymes to fluorophore to biotins and gold. They are also available as both conjugated and unconjugated fragments. Finally, if there is a specific conjugate we do not offer but you would like conjugated to one of our secondary antibodies, we can provide that as a custom service. Lastly, Jackson has been producing all of its products in the United States for over 38 years. We manufacture under ISO 9001-2015 quality controlled standards and distribute globally to researchers, diagnostic, and pharmaceutical companies alike. Over the past four decades, we've honed our ability to make and deliver polyclonals at large scale with lot-to-lot -lot consistency, which leads to low cost per assay and reliable product performance over time. We can manufacture any of our secondaries in bulk, and we offer custom conjugation and absorptions as needed. Our technical and production staff enjoys working with customers and is always available for a consultation if you require assistance with product selection, assay design, or other related issues. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time and consideration.